Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and uh, I hope you're all keeping safe and well and looking after yourselves and uh, yes we're not at the station we're here at the bench painting some figures that I've bought off of eBay and uh, I thought that I've got to make them my own when I looked at them they, had all, they were already painted but I thought I could really do a better job and um, and they're two ladies as you can see I'm just putting some clothes on them um, yes like I said they, they, they weren't in the best of condition so I thought I'd spruce them up a little bit they're for an up and coming up and coming scene for the layout and uh, and I do enjoy painting figures uh, yeah and for you know she's got she's got some lipstick on and how I did that was with a toothpick chafing really really fine dipped in paint just rubbed it under her nose and it looks like she's wearing lipstick um, yeah so this is where we are at the moment we will come back to the station in a minute once I've finished painting both of these figures but for now I should just carry on with these like I said for the finest lines you sharpen a toothpick right to a really fine point dip it in your paint and just create the line that's what I'm doing here is I'm just creating a line between the red and the white like so and I shall do I did do a video on painting figures called Oh Mr Porter uh, ages ago and um, you're more than welcome to check that one out but uh, as you can see these two are now fully clothed as they have their shoes on uh, they did come as a pair and uh, yeah this was a, in a black uniform and this was in a blue uniform so I've just repainted them and they're now looking far better than what they were so these are now ready to go on the layout so time to crack on with our build right we've had our fun time to get back to our serious um, build which is the time dock station so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to continue and make these um, canopy supports um, you see we've got dimensions there 25 by 34 but I might alter that slightly I think I want to come out a little bit further we know the platforms 37 millimeters um, from the edge of the building to the edge of the platform um, so I might make that just slightly longer to take it over the edge of the platform very very slightly but we shall see how we get on with that right so that's the the bracketry and here it is again in this drawing and um, you can just make it out and this is the edge of the uh, building if you're looking at it from either north or west where we've got three columns um, which will hopefully support the canopy but that 
might change depending on how well these look once they're made. Right, moving on a bit. I made up this little jig template um, which will hopefully keep them all the same and uh, as you can see I've got a piece of copper wire in there well it's not copper wire it's a 0.8 um, TIG welding rod so I've bent it at 90 degrees so that's um, 24 mil down and that's 35 mil across so I've made this jig up so that um, I can solder them in place and get them all the same and um, here are some more examples of these brackets and here is a good example of those brackets supporting the canopies um, as you can see you've got a little uh, decorative piece underneath the bracket so I'll probably do that as well and they it's quite um, low down so I reckon that's about three three to four foot so roughly about 22 mil and then by the time you add that on uh, and I think 22 mil so that probably be about 26 mil in total and you can see if you and this one here is at Loughborough station on the Great Central totally different again with a floral display in the center but rings either side so no matter where you go on the network you'll see these type of supports and here we have another one and this one is at Wolston station not too far away from Southampton totally different again different type of floral um, insert in the center and it does have the support there which is probably tied into the wall and it's probably bolted back in the channel in recess in there and uh, yeah so I just thought I'd show you these few examples before I get stuck into my version so it's important that we get all these right angles um, well right so like I said earlier all we're doing is folding or bending this wire at 90 degrees and making sure it fits into the jig and if it's a little bit long we need to cut it back so what I do is put the TIG rod into the snips grip it and then put my hand over it to stop the uh, the off cut literally pinging across the room because you've got to put a little tiny bit of force onto this to make sure you cut straight through and then we just offer it up still not quite there so I'll take a little bit more of only a fraction this time okay, and that should now fit yep there it goes it's in there and then we do the same to the long leg right, only 16 more of these to go and then we can do the next phase so it's important that once you've made your jig up that the bits, the bits that you're going to put in there actually fit and are 90 degrees like so I've been experimenting with some washers and um, spring washers, corrugated washers, various sizes and obviously that those washers won't take to this copper coated TIG rods, 0.8 rods these are by the way um, so I've decided to do what I've done in the past and that makes some copper rings up
and that's what's been soldered in the middle of this bracket. If I just flip it over, you can see the copper rings inside. Um, two sizes that I've used, 7mm um, and 3mm. You're probably thinking, why is he talking about drill bits? Well, let me show you what I've done. So you get a bit of copper wire, you put it into the flutes of the drill. Once you get it into the flute of the drill, you hold it with your thumb and then you twist the copper wire around the drill to form a spring once it's all done. And then once that's done, you get as many, and obviously once you get it on there, you've got to push the copper wire together. I just get that into focus. Come on, focus up. There you go. And then you push the copper wire together to form a spring so it's nice and tight. And then once it's tight, you'll end up with something like this. And what you do then is just cut down the center of the spring. And you'll end up with loads of little 4 mil rings. like so. And if you do the same with the 7mm drill, you'll end up with some 8mm rings. Obviously if you put two of those and then one of the 8mm rings together into the jig like this, and then put another piece of that jig wire preformed, and then we can solder that together to form the bracket as you can see. But the only thing is we've got to flatten the rings once you've taken them off the spring because they are slightly curled as you can see in here. If I get that in focus, there you go, as you can see the slightly offset. So we've got to flatten them so we have a nice flat washer or ring as it were. Let me just put that either side of the 8mm ring. And then we just solder those in. Yeah, so once you flatten your rings, lay them on your jig like I've done here, and then we have to form the lower. Um, part of this bracket. Um, basically I just get the pliers and it's roughly about 3 mil for the first. Bend it at 45 degrees which will then give you the piece that you need to fold and um, solder onto the um, right angle. And then as you can see here yeah, I've put a mark on my um, pliers and then it I could just go ahead with the next bit, keeping that in line, making sure that it's flat as well, and just give it a little push, and then move it along to the next bend, and then give it a little push, and eventually you create the curve for the lower piece of the bracket. Normally, it's normally three parts, and then we just place that in there. So as you can see, it's slowly getting closer. Right, so on the second bend, which is the middle one, I'll just give that a bit more, which will bring it away slightly. As you can see, I'm almost touching all three rings now. So on the, on the third bend, that's this one. We give that a little tweak to make it go flat. Bear in mind, keeping the, the rod 
flat all the time as we go. Hopefully that should be it. So that's almost there now. Obviously I've got to tweak bins two and three a little bit more. But you can see what I'm doing there. So that's almost there. So now I can cut it to length. So I cut that and then all it's just a case I'm doing now is just the little tweaks here and there to get the radius to sit in there. So I'm almost there as you can see. So bends two, I've got to bend it a little bit more, bring it down, bring it down and then pull it all back. So we're almost there for soldering. Then the next stage is once you've taken it out of the, the jig as it were, it's just a case of just checking the opposite side. Because this is the opposite side now. So I've flipped it over and I'm just looking for some dry joints. And there's one there, look, you see that's so we just give that a little touch with some solder. And that one as well. Just to make sure that each one of these joints is adhered to each other. And then that's it, it's just a case of cleaning it up with a file and some sandpaper. Right, so I've got one of these brackets in my hand and I'm just going to offer it up. There is a faint line all the way along that edge there, just in line with this cobblestone. So I'm just going to place that one there, just to give you an idea of what these are going to look like uh, once they're painted. So, as you can see, there'll be uh, six along this edge. One, two, three four, five, and one right on the corner there, six. And uh, if I hold it in line with the line, and then you can see sit underneath there, so it's quite uh, in context with the scale of things. So it looks about right. And if I put this straight edge up against the platform, and it's just about it should be about a millimetre or two spare to allow for the, the corners to run along this edge as well. So, I thought I'd show you this. And, uh, yeah, i still got 24 of these to make. It is a bit of a, a, a marathon, this. Uh, but I'm persevering with it, even though I'm only about halfway through. Uh, I've done 13 up to now. And uh, yeah, I think I'm uh, enjoying this um, little tiny project, as it were, creating these supports. Um, it is fiddly, time consuming. But I'm sure the end result will pay dividends, as you'll see in the coming days or weeks, depending on how many of these I can get done. I'm averaging between five and six an evening, which is not bad. Consider only spending a couple of hours each evening. But uh, yeah, I'm enjoying this. Fabrication is the word I'm looking for. Fabrication. Okay, let's have a closer look at the finished bracket. Um, 
Yeah, so you can see all the solder is nice and flat now and smooth where I've cleaned it using a file and some 1000 grit sandpaper just to take uh, the, the lumps of the solder off and give it this unique look. Um, I've used a circular file to clean these holes or these circulars because obviously the solder has run in there in some places so I've cleaned them up. Um, they're not quite finished yet uh, as I've still got to degrease them before we continue with the process of making these brackets. So let's have a look at what we've done so far. We have made 16 of these brackets out of the 30 so we still got a long way to go and um, to be perfectly honest I'm enjoying making these um, little bit of metal work in miniature. Right I think that's all for me this week and I uh, hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and you've taken something from this video and um, hopefully next time we'll have the full 30 finished and then we can continue with the other little bits and pieces that it's got the 